Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom Israel, Captain OC. Officer Baru. Today's 15 minutes with the captains, we are going to go into a very, very famous Christian doctrine. Today we are going to go into the Great Commission. Many of you may not know what this is. Some of you may know what this is. Alright, so we're going to show you where this doctrine is based off of and give you the correct understanding on what it is exactly speaking about. Alright, Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. The book of Matthew, chapter 28 and verse 19. Uh -huh. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, uh -huh. baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son uh -huh. and of the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. teaching them to observe all things uh -huh. whether I have commanded you. Read. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So, so this is where you get the belief of white man Jesus being spread to the four corners of the earth right. and they based it off of the description. But if you read this without knowing the context of the 30 something odd books before the book of Matthew, mm -hmm. you don't understand why Christ gave instructions to his disciples to go and teach all nations. Why would he tell him to do that? Because when you go through the Bible, if you ever read it, you would know exactly why he told them to go to all nations. Right. But that's why they only give you what? They give you Psalms and Proverbs, and then they give you the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the understanding. So let's read that uh, definition in Wikipedia of what the Great Commission is. In Christianity, the Great Commission is the instruction... Notice it said in Christianity. Like I told you, we teach the doctrines of men. That is what we've been taught here. In Christianity, the Great Commission is the instruction of the resurrected Jesus Christ to his disciples to spread his teachings to all the nations of the world. Uh -huh. The famous version of great, the Great Commission is in Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Uh -huh. We're on a, mount, on a mount, mountain in Gil, Galilee. Jesus calls on his followers to make disciples of and baptize all nations in the name of the Father, mm -hmm. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right, that's what we just read. Read. It has become a tenet in Christian theology. In it, what? Christian theology. Keep that in mind. In Christian theology, meaning their doctrines. Read. Emphasizing ministry, missionary work, evangelism, and baptism. Uh huh. The apostles are said to have dispersed from Jerusalem and founded the apostolic sees. Presterites believe that the Great Commission and other Bible prophecies were fulfilled in the first century, while futurists believe Bible prophecy is yet to fulfill at the second coming. So, they say, some people say this has already been fulfilled, others say this is yet to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Give me Job 11 and 6 real quick. One thing that Christian theologians and theologians don't understand is that the Bible is not a one-fold book. The Bible happens time and time and time again. The Most High continues to let the same things happen many of times. That's why we've been in the captivity hundreds, I mean not hundreds of times, but many different times. Read that. The book of Job chapter 11 and verse 6. Uh-huh. And that he would show thee the, secret of, the secrets of wisdom. Uh-huh. That they are double. That what? That they are double. So, it was fulfilled during biblical times, and it still is yet to be fulfilled today. 
Why? Because we ha we were not as a nation. That, that when it says go forth and teach all nations, this is the secret. It was speaking about the nations in which the nation of Israel was scattered unto. It's that simple. I, I can open and close it now, but I'm going to prove it to you with the scriptures. Read that again. That they are what? And that... And that he would show thee the secret of wisdom, uh -huh. that they are double to that which is. That to double to that which is. So, before you get the mindset that he's going to all nations, let's understand the doctrine of Christ. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. Before you get lost in the sauce, and you want to start taking white man Jesus, and you want to build a statue in Brazil that's bigger than anything you've ever seen, right. let's see what is he speaking about. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. Uh-huh. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So when Christ was on the scene, he said he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, why would he change that a few chapters later? Hmm. Let's see. He didn't. But what he did acknowledge is something happened. He understood something was going to happen in the future. Give me Luke chapter 21. And verse 24. Understand, Christ understood something was going to happen to the children of Israel. Alright, what was going to happen to them? The book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 24. Uh-huh. And they shall fall, fall by the edge of the sword. Who was the they? The Israelites were going to fall by the edge of the sword. When? In 70 AD when Titus and Vestation came and sacked Jerusalem. Read. And shall be led away captive uh -huh. into all nations. Into what? All nations. They were going to be led captive unto all nations. Read. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles uh -huh. until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. You see that? No longer could that ministry be based in Jerusalem. Why? Because the Israelites were going to be taken captive and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Right. It's something called the Jewish diaspora. And it's not talking about those people in the land today. Because it just said the land was going to be trodden down of Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Understand that. Now, how do we know we were scattered? Deuteronomy 4 and verse 27. We're going to show you the Jewish diaspora in the Bible. And it's not Jewish. It's the Israelite diaspora. That's right. Understand that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 27. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. And what? And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, uh -huh. and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord shall lead you. So understand, this was Bible prophecy. These were the words of Moses. They read the scriptures. That's why Christ said all throughout the New Testament, I came not to destroy the prophets, the law, and the Proverbs, which was written of me, and what the nation had in store for them. If we didn't keep the commandments, which we didn't, we were going to be scattered. Christ understood that. He knew that. That's why he told him, flee. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 64. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 64. We're going to further back that up. And the Lord shall scatter shall thee. What? Scatter thee read. among all people. While we read, this is our history. It's talking about the Israelites. The Old Testament and the New Testament line up. Why was Christ telling you to go to all nations? Because he knew the curse that was coming upon us. That we will be what? Scattered to all nations. Read. From the one end of the earth, uh -huh. even unto the other. Read. And there thou shalt serve other gods. And that's why it says go forth and what? Teach all nations. Right. Why? Because in these other lands, what would happen? We would learn other gods. That is why we had to go forth and teach all nations. Baptizing them what? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Why? Because that had left our remembrance. We, had, we, we became slaves, and we learned other gods. Now give me that definition of diaspora in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 133, diaspora. The name applied to the Jews. Hold on, what? The name applied to the Jews. The name diaspora only applied to the Jews. Read. Living outside of Palestine. Mm -hmm. And maintaining their religious faith among the Gentiles. Read. God had warned the Jews through Moses. That through what? Through Moses. That's what we just read in Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 4. Read. That dispersion among other nations. Uh-huh. 
would be their lot read. if they departed from the Mosaic law. You see that? That is what we did. Read. These prophecies were largely fulfilled in the two captivities uh -huh. by Assyria and Babylonia. You see that? Because both of them came into our land and they took us out. But remember, we read the scriptures are double unto thee. Read. But there were other captivities which helped scatter the Israelites. Exactly. What they don't count as a captivity was the Roman captivity. That was a captivity. When we were in Greece, that was a captivity. When we were in America, this is a captivity of the Israelites. Read. By the time of Christ, the diaspora must have been several times the population of Palestine. Uh -huh. Paul invariably contacted the people the, the what the people Who is the people was speaking about remember the diaspora was speaking about the israelite you said it was only concerning the jews right read paul invariably contacted the people uh -huh. in every city he visited you see that he invariably contacted the people who is the people was speaking about the jews that were scattered according to what moses said in the law in deuteronomy chapter 4. Right. so let's get some more understanding on that let's go to acts chapter 2 in verse 1 and then we're going to jump down to verse 5. We're showing you the Great Commission is only pertaining to the Israelites. Don't get confused when they throw out these theological words and doctrines that they create. They're trying to confuse you. Right. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, when there, with, excuse me, they were all with one accord in one place. So on the day of Pentecost, this was the day everybody had to come together. There were three times you had to present yourself before the Lord. Some people were still keeping that law. Jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem. Read. Jews. What? Jews. Uh -huh. Devout men uh -huh. out of every nation. Out of what? Out of every nation. Jews were coming out of every nation to worship how it was written of all throughout the first five books. Read. Under heaven. Uh-huh. Verse 6. So it was Jews out of every nation. Go to Isaiah chapter 11. This is a future prophecy of what was going to happen to us. Let's get that. We showed you Jews out of every nation. We showed you we were going to be scattered. We told you in the book of Luke, Christ said it as well. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 11. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in that day uh -huh. that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. The second time. To recover the remnant of his people uh -huh. which shall be left. From Assyria, uh -huh. and from Egypt, uh -huh. and from Pathros, uh -huh. and from Cush, uh -huh. and from Elam, Read. and from Shinar, uh -huh. and from Hamath, Read. and from the islands of the sea. All these different locations is where the Israelites were scattered. Keep reading. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, uh -huh. and shall assemble the outcast of Israel. Uh -huh. And gather together the dispersed. The what? The dispersed uh -huh. of Judah uh -huh. from the four corners of the earth. You see that? He was going to gather the dispersed. The dispersed from the four corners of the earth. James 1 and 1. We're just giving you the proof. When it's talking about all nations, it's talking about Israelites. It's not talking about other nations. Why would you have to go to other... Well, we never just went to other nations. Right. We were always taken there. We were taken to Assyria, so the prophets went to Assyria. We were taken to Babylon, so we went to Babylon. We were in Greece, so we went to Greece. We were in Rome, so we went to Rome. In America, now, we, it's, it's, it's common sense if you read the Bible. Read that. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes... To the twelve tribes? ...which are scattered... Abroad to the 12 tribes which were scattered abroad. There was a scattering of our people Understand that that's why that Luke 21 is so important. Tobit 13 in verse 3. We were always a scattered people All right The Israelites have been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth get that through your brain Get that through your brain so when you're reading the scriptures and you're wondering why are these prophets talking about these strange lands why is, it, is Paul visiting uh, the church in Macedonia, or Corinth? Because we were scattered there. Read that. The book of Tobit, chapter 13 and verse 3. Uh -huh. Confess him before the Gentiles. You what? Confess him before the Gentiles. Read. Ye children of Israel. Uh, you what? Ye children of Israel. Read. For he hath scattered us among them. Uh-huh. 
there declare his greatness Read. and exalt him before all the living. Uh -huh. For he is our Lord uh -huh. and he is the God of our Father forever. Read. And he will scourge us for our iniquities uh -huh. and will have mercy again and will gather us out of all nations. <laughs> what? Gather us out of all nations. You see that? He is going, that, we always had that understanding. This was in the book of Tobit after we were taken into Assyria. They knew wherever they were at, the Most High was going to gather us. Read that again. And he will gather us. And he and will gather out us out of all nations. Uh -huh. Among whom he have scattered us. Among whom he have scattered us. Mm -hmm. That was always the understanding. That's why Christ said, I didn't come to do away with what was written by the prophets. Mm -hmm. Understand that. Now, the baptism. Let's read Matthew 28 and 19 again. So I hope you understand to teach all nations. I pray you understand that part. Now you say, okay. Well, I, you, I see y'all teach all nations. Y'all do that. Mm -hmm. But y'all ain't baptizing. Let's see. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19. Uh-huh. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, uh -huh. baptizing them in the name of the Father uh -huh. and of the Son uh -huh. and of the Holy Ghost, Read. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. So, 1 Corinthians 1 and 17. So let's see, what did he mean by baptize the world? Go and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17. Uh -huh. For Christ sent me not to baptize. For what? For Christ sent me not to baptize, uh -huh. but to preach the gospel. Uh -huh. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. So understand, we were not sent to baptize. Now, you might be saying, well, Christ said baptize. Mm -hmm. Paul said don't baptize. Let's get the understanding. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. What was he going into? Let's get the proper understanding. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Because baptism is not something that's new according to this. Read that. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud uh -huh. and all passed through the sea uh -huh. and were all baptized. And what? All baptized. Now, I never read about us being baptized. Right. But right here it says what? And were all baptized uh -huh. unto Moses. Unto what? Unto Moses uh -huh. in the cloud and in the sea. Now when did Moses baptize the children of Israel? Because I can't. I never could find that scripture. But let's get the understanding. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter thirty-three, and let's start at verse one. What was the baptism that Paul did do? Because remember, the baptism of John was just a figure. It was just a figure of what was to come, which was Christ. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33 and verse 1. Uh-huh. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel uh -huh. before his death. Right, so what we're reading about right now is how the children of Israel were baptized in the sea. Read. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai uh -huh. and rose up from Seir uh -huh. unto thee. He shined forth from Mount Paran uh -huh. and he came with ten thousands of saints uh -huh. from his right hand with a fiery law for them. With a fiery law for them, read. Yea, he loved them. Uh -huh. he, he loved the people. The people. All his saints are in thine hand uh -huh. and they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. Everyone will receive of his words. What was in his words? Moses commanded us a law. Moses what? Commanded us a law. Uh -huh. Even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. So when did Moses baptize the children of Israel? He baptized them when he gave them the commandments of God. And that is what you read all throughout the New Testament. The Paul was going through these different lands and giving them the understanding on the laws of God. Because remember, he was teaching the Gentiles that were what? Scattered amongst the other nations. Yep. That what? Deuteronomy 28, 64 said what? We were going to learn other gods. Right. We had lost our understanding of the scriptures, brothers and sisters. So when we go back and baptize them, we're teaching them the laws of God, the commandments. Mm -hmm. Now, from there, go to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. So I pray you understand it. We got two scriptures left. I pray that you are understanding what this scripture is going into. 
is going in to recover the remnant of Israel that was scattered. Read that. The book of 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. Uh-huh. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Uh-huh. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Not the what? Putting away of the filth of the flesh. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh. Meaning what? The water baptism. Read. But the answer of a good conscience toward God. How do you get a good conscience towards God? You keep the laws of God. That's it's that simple. So when he said I didn't, I was not sent to baptize, he was speaking about water baptism. Understand that. When you go and baptize all nations, teach them the commandments that they did not have. Alright? So let's end out Matthew 28. I mean, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. So we pray that you understood the Great Commission. It's talking about the Israelites that were scattered throughout all nations. Nothing more, nothing less. Very, very basic. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 38. Uh, 30. 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh -huh. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Uh -huh. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. And they shall see the Son of Man coming from the, from the clouds of heaven. Read. With power and great glory. Uh -huh. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Uh -huh. And they shall gather together. And they shall what? Gather together. Read. His elect uh -huh. from the four winds for one end of heaven to the other. You see that? He's going to gather the elect from one end of the earth. Unto the other. Who was scattered from one in the other, earth to the other? The Israelites. Right. Who is God's elect? The Israelites. So, with that, we pray you understand the Great Commission a little better now. Say shalom. Shalom, Israel.